Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. Our lead story of the day is a clip from Real Time with Bill Maher that has Republican Nancy Mace of South Carolina and writer Andrew Sullivan discussing gender ideology and gender theory as well as pronouns that are being pushed upon our youth inside our education system and the classroom. We're going to break it down for you. But as always, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. If you don't know what to write, write something as simple as good morning. We got an awesome community here on the Bald Brad channel that would love to engage with you, not only in the live chat, but also in the comment section below, as well as myself. So your help and support would be greatly appreciated. Without further ado, let's go ahead and roll right into the tape. Why, why do you have to teach it? Why does a four-year-old come in? Instead of teaching them the colors, you're telling them, pick your pronoun. Well, yeah. Where on earth did that come from? Uh, and right. who... Who told us it was going to be imposed on children? And now it's yes. in school curriculum everywhere. I told my kids when this wokeness started happening, this gender thing started happening, it's pretty new. I said, don't be coming home with your gender pronouns. You better be coming home with A's and B's. I mean, that's what it really should be about, our education system. Well, and it's not but more and more, you look at these curriculum, it's all about that stuff. Mm -hmm. well, it's that, all about thing. identity. It's all about being queer or trans. I mean, children can't understand that stuff. Not in kindergarten. And you say that as a queer. <laughs> I honestly, I don't want to teach five-year-olds about no. being gay. I think it's, wait a well, little bit. And, and they'll pick it up anyway. It's not like they can't watch the TV. I mean, you don't, but what they're doing is not telling them that. They're telling them something worse. They're telling them that people can choose to be a boy or a girl or neither or both or something else entirely. Right. That is a lie. You can't. And it's done in order to placate certain special interests in Washington, namely the LGBTQIA plus people who also have been captured by the far left. We should say I, no I, to this. I, I, that's, I know. Why is it? I don't I just don't understand why this is the hill the Democratic Party wants to die on. Because they're too scared. Both parties are too scared. They're, they're, scared bullied, the they're, they're scared bullied by the what? extreme right, bullied by the yes. extreme left, and no one has the balls to say. Well, hold on. This is one of the major issues of this clip that I have a problem with. He's saying that the Democrats are being bullied by the extreme left and that they're bullied by the extreme right. But the Democrats are with the extreme left on this issue. I mean, you literally have the president of the United States pushing this whole thing as well, along with the vice president, along with the freaking Karine Jean-Pierre and her predecessor, Jen Psaki. I mean, this has been going on for two years plus now. So the LGBTQ plus community that votes for Democrats are in bed with the Democrat party. And he's saying that those that are in bed with the Democrat party are bullying the Democrat Party when it's the Democrat Party that's pushing this whole thing, which is why Bill Maher just got done saying, why is it the Democrat Party wants to have this issue to be the issue that they want to die on the hill about? And you can't say it's the Republican side or the conservatives or the far right saying that they're bullying these people. I mean, hell, Joe Biden, Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, uh, anybody in the Democrat Party is now saying MAGA supporters, right? The new lingo is ultra MAGA, our threats to democracy and all these other things. We don't want to teach all this stuff to our children. We don't want this happening in the classroom. We're not bullying anybody. We're just raising the issue of going, you're grooming these kids. It's wrong what you're doing. It's disgusting. And I'm saying this as an educator. It's wrong. It's disgusting. It's not okay to do this inside the classroom. But somehow we're bullying them when we say this or call them groomers. All the while they call us racist, sexist, bigots, homophobes, all these other things all the time. But that's not bullying. No, 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 no. So I don't agree with that, but let's continue. No, no, we haven't had a moment yet and again, when someone stands up and says no. We're not, no, none of this is anti-trans. No. No, we're, most of these people who are making the argument we're making are liberal people who think it's a great thing that in America now anybody can actually be whatever they want. And of course, trans is a real thing, rare, but real, but rare. That part seems to be, we all seem to have to pretend that we're born, I don't know, jump ball. I don't know. I just want to point out, if you notice, and this is kind of where I think Bill Maher's bias seeps out, is that he doesn't want to say Republicans and conservatives, so he has to use the word liberals. It's not liberals coming out and saying all this. No, it's not. No, it's not. You, Bill Maher is like uh, an outlier for liberals to come out and talk about this stuff. You would see more liberals do so, and you don't. You see primarily conservatives, Republicans, Ron DeSantis, myself. You have the Daily Wire unit. You have Crowder, right? You have Candace Owens. Uh, you have... Turning Point USA, you have PragerU, all pushing this stuff. I don't see any liberal outlets. Maybe it's just not coming up on my feed, really making this a heavy, heavy issue here. So I don't agree with that. But, you know, hey, he'd be slandered by his own people by saying, oh, Republicans are speaking the same way I am right now because he doesn't want to get lumped in with them and all this other stuff. 
and, are you and it's just, are you it's just kidding? bullshit. It's are just kidding? bullshit. Can't even pick out and decide what pizza topping they want on their pizza at 12. How do they know if they want to be a eunuch or a boy or a girl or a tree or whatever the heck the hundred plus genders are, are that are out there now? They don't. They don't know. And the thing is, right, I, I'm, tree. I'm pro I'm, LG. Yeah, that's a did, thing. Did I not I read that in your yes, article we that read you that can in identi- article. teaching a kindergartner that you can identify as a tree? Yes. And that. <laughs> and then. And then. And then it's telling, not a joke, it's serious, it's no, happening. I'm dead serious, it's, but it's not, that, that advances kinder- social justice. What? Yeah. But then t- to tell this, something like this to a t- kinder... What's crazy is that you hear the crowd just hysterically laughing. And, and, and I get the, the, the humor behind it, but you're also talking about people's lives, right? This is where the development of the brain is happening, happens all the way roughly 25 to 28, depending on who you're talking about. I mean, this is... a. a a little child that's absorbing all the information from an authority figure, meaning an adult. It's not funny. They really believe all this stuff. You guys, I mean, there's people teaching them. They could be a cat, a dog, a wolf. And that's why these people grow up thinking that they are those things. Not like it just came out of the ether. I mean, some of it did, but the vast majority was pushed upon them in some way, shape or form. And if it's not happening at home and it's not happening from their friends or their friend's family, it's happened probably in the classroom. And this is nuts. And people are just laughing about it. I mean, you're going to have an entire generation that is totally screwed up up here because of what's going on in our education system. And trust me, I see some of it. As an educator, I see some of it. So it's wild that you have people going, laughing about it, thinking, oh, it's it's just so funny. It's 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 terrible. It's wrong. It's seriously wrong. It's it's really not funny. Again, I understand there is a humor side of it, but not like that. This is this is weird. Gardener, yeah. or that boys can menstruate and, and uh, girls can have penises. It's got to be... In- it, how, how can it process that when you're that age? It's batshit crazy to do this to our kids when they're young. Right. I mean, they will eventually figure it out like we all did. I mean, I dropped out of high school at 17. I'm in Congress now. Like, I eventually figured it out. <laughs> Every, I mean, it, it takes well, some time sometimes. I, I, but, you know, I, I eventually got there. I, think we're, got there. I know, but I, no, we, I, went through, yeah. we went through some of the people who were your colleagues. Yeah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> brag about that. Well, I mean, just because you might have colleagues that are knuckleheads doesn't mean that you didn't figure it out. So, I mean, I don't I don't get that that joke there. I mean, I understand Bill Maher's going, oh, well, you're Republican, so clearly you didn't figure it out and all these other things. But one thing I do want to address here, you guys, is the idea of what they said of, oh, well, these kids will figure it out later. And there is some truth to that. They will figure certain th- a lot of things out, actually, in life later on. But there's this push for some reason that, you know, kids have to learn everything inside the classroom. And that couldn't be furthest from the truth. We have only so much that time and only so much curriculum that we can cover inside the classroom per the standards that are offered up by the state that we need to cover. And what's amazing to me is it's being pushed. Oh, well, you got to teach them this. You got to teach them that that aren't in the standards. But it's like, why can't you just teach them that at home? I mean, why can't you just hop on Amazon or go to Barnes and Nobles and pick your kid up a book and teach them that yourself, whatever you want? You're kind of seeing this pushed on Ron DeSantis in Florida where they're basically calling him a racist because he doesn't want to uh, implement an AP course for African-American studies, I believe is what it's called. So they're calling him a racist going, well, you're allowing European AP studies to take uh, effect in your state, but why not this? And he's going, well, you guys are having a whole curriculum and a lesson on queer theory inside this uh, course that you want to implement. So it's not about teaching African-American studies or their ancestry or their lineage or the history of it in general. He's, you're trying to push a certain agenda and indoctrination upon our, our youth and our kids, and he's not going to have it. So again, as an educator, I sit back and look, I only have so much time in the classroom with them. I only have so much time to teach the standards. I'm going to focus on the standards because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm not in the business of doing all that crazy stuff of gender ideology, gender theory, and all this other stuff. I'm there to teach the mathematics, statistics, and finance are the two things I actually teach. I'm not there to do all that weird, wacko stuff here and do this make-believe stuff that a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man, and all this other silliness. I mean, it really is silliness, you guys, and it's disgusting that they're doing this to our children. Folks, I teach high schoolers, and they struggle with a lot of things and conceptualizing a lot of things. Adults struggle with the conceptualizing what this LGBTQ plus indoctrination is. I mean, I've literally been in faculty trainings when I first became a teacher at another district where we had somebody come in and talk to us about this very same thing they're talking about. And I look over at the science department and I'm not even kidding, hand to God, they literally have the pamphlets and they're turning around because the whole department's trying to figure it out as science teachers that have like masters in this stuff going, this doesn't make sense. So adults, it doesn't make sense, but they expect a kid that has freaking crayons up his nose and it's eating the freaking paste, you know, the glue uh, to figure all this stuff out. It's crazy. It's disgusting. It's grooming. I know we talked about this before at length, but you guys, at some point it needs to stop and it's only going to be the parents that make it stop. And again, if you want your kid to learn something, 
You can teach them yourself. Go get them a book. You can find anything on the internet. You can literally learn anything on the internet. I mean, hell, you don't even have to go to college anymore to take full-on classes. I mean, Harvard has their whole law thing on, on YouTube that you could just watch. You don't have to go to Harvard to actually learn a Harvard freaking course. Well, speaking of Harvard, speaking of actually knowing things, that moves us directly right into our second and last segment of the day where you have you have a federal district court nominee. And this is kind of making major airwaves yesterday, appearing to struggle with the most basic of questions during her Thursday morning hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, committee. This is a Biden nominee, by the way. Uh, leave it up to Biden to, to basically have a nominee that doesn't know the basics of what her job is supposed to be of just knowing the Constitution. But as always, folks, make sure you support us by hitting that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit up the live chat if you haven't. Engage with your fellow patriot, your fellow men and men and women. And also leave us a nice comment down below. It really does help the channel. Your support and help is always appreciated. Without further ado, let's see Mr. Kennedy here give a basic question. Should be a basic answer, but she can't do it. Let's go ahead and roll it. Senator Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations uh, to all of you. Um, judge on the far end, uh, tell, tell me what Article 5 of the Constitution does. Article 5 is not coming to mind at the moment. Okay. How about Article 2? Neither is Article 2. Okay. Do you know what purposivism is? Um, in my 12 years as an assistant attorney general huh? and my nine years serving as a judge, I was not faced with that precise question. Um, we are the highest trial court in Washington state, so I'm frequently faced with um, issues that I'm not familiar with, and I thoroughly review the law, our research. Uh, I just want to point out that that's a, that's a really big rag on uh, the area of which you work in because you don't know kind of the basics of the U.S. Constitution of which you're supposed to hold up, especially as a, as a federal judge that you're trying to be appointed to. Uh, I'm not saying I know it, but I'm not a judge. I don't work in the legal system. I'm not supposed to pull this stuff out of my head. If you were to ask me a question about finance, I definitely know the basics of it. That's for damn sure. If you were to ask me a question about basic statistics, I know the basic statistics. Heck, when I was even in, a, in public accounting as a tax accountant, I knew the basics of the tax code, the tax law. To I mean, this is as basic as you can get. You're there to uphold the Constitution and the law, and you don't even know what the articles represent. And then you're saying, well, I've been doing it for 12 years of this and nine years of this. You guys, if you were in nine years in public accounting, you would be almost at a manager level or at a manager level and you're handling clients left and right. And if you looked at somebody and go, well, I don't even know what gap is. I don't know what IFRS is. I don't know what this or that is. It doesn't look good. If you talk to a math teacher and they didn't know the basic mathematic components of which they teach, it's probably a big issue. Is it not? This is a big issue that she doesn't know all this. And apply the law to the facts okay. presented to me. Well, you're going to be faced with it as a, if you're confirmed. I can assure you of that. Um, I mean, it, it, it really is. It's a short clip, but it is really remarkable. And it kind of speaks volumes at to where some of these people are. They just don't know what's going on. And again, it's the basic stuff that you should know. And I'm not hounding her in a level of like, well, that was a weird question. And that who the heck's going to know that you'd have to look it up. We had that in accounting. Again, we had that when we were taxes. I mean, heck, you walk in our conference room, there's nothing but tax law all the way around. There's going to be some things that you just haven't seen in a very long time that you have to look up. But again, they are the basic things that you shouldn't have to look up. They're like, oh yeah, I know that. Meaning like the United States Constitution. If I was trying to be a federal judge, you think I would know the U.S. Constitution like the back of my hand? Probably. But you see this time and time again. Remember when uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson was trying to be nominated to the Supreme Court and somebody just asked her, could a man be a woman and could a woman be a man? And she goes, well, I'm not a biologist. I mean, that is literally where we're at, you guys. I mean, people are actually getting dumber as as the longer we go in throughout our society in the years, the years of the United States actually being around because these people are going into our education system, like we saw in the first segment, learning about pro uh, pronouns, gender ideology, uh, gender theory, how, to, how a man can be a woman, a woman can be a man, how a human being can be a cat, a dog, a wolf, you can be anything you want to be because that's what we're focusing on now. So you're seeing the, the denigration, the, the destruction of our education system and actually people becoming smarter and being tested on a level 
where they should progress forward if they pass. And if they don't pass, then they get held back, of which you don't see in the education system anymore. Nobody gets held back anymore. We did. We talked about that, how math scores in their class, they're getting 95% math scores. But then when they take the same objective test later on, they get a, they're get they getting a 2% passing rate because people are just pushing them through the system. They're allowed to make up the test. They're allowed to make up the quizzes, score 100%. They're allowed to uh, get 50% on their homework, of which they're not even doing or turning in. So even if you don't turn it in, you still get 50% credit. So this is what happens. And these are the types of people that get produced here, you guys, that don't even know the basic stuff, the basic law of which they're trying to push forward. And again, the, the, whole, the whole purposism that was uh, asked by uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy there had to be looked up and it's defined as follows. Any various theories of nature or of human and animal behavior that regard purpose of conscious intent as a basal fact, meaning uh, that's exactly what we just talked about. It's just a basic fact that you should know this basic foundation to be a federal judge to know the United States Constitution. But I want to know what you think about all this below. I thought we have a little bit of a zinger, a little bit of a short show today here being Friday. But as always, make sure you support the show by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. Again, if you're unsure what to write, write something as simple as good morning. You guys are awesome. I love you. Have a great weekend. We'll be here tomorrow for Supernatural Saturday. And then Sunday, we'll be back here for another episode of The Bald Brad Show.